Until a few years ago, fluorescent lamps were made up of glass tubes, which required auxiliary circuits. Tubes had end connectors, and inside they had a couple of filaments. Inside the glass tube, they also had some argon gas and mercury vapor. If someone tried to hook them directly to the household AC, the lamp would not work because it was too long and did not ionize on a home AC outlet. A coil had to be added. In this case, it was called a ballast. And a push button was also added to complete filament's circuit, protected by the impedance of the ballast. Pressing the button closed the filament's circuit and they would turn on. With this, free electrons were produced which ionized the gas inside the glass tube, thus preparing it to start an arc inside the tube. When the button was released, the filaments were turned off and now the current began to flow through the ionized gases. The electric discharge produced a large amount of ultraviolet radiation, which cannot go through ordinary glass. However, the inner surface of the glass tube is coated with a fluorescent powder which, when hit by ultraviolet radiation, gives off a white light, thus becoming a source of visible light. The fact of having to press the push button was a hassle and a waste of time, especially if there were many lamps to be turned on since each lamp required a separate push button. Then they came up with a small device called a starter. The starter was a small glass bubble containing neon gas and two electrodes very close to each other, so a small arc could easily be created. This arc produced some heat. One of the electrodes was made up of two strips of metal welded together, one of which expanded more readily than the other, so that when heated by the small discharge, it would bend until it touched the other electrode. Then the charge in the starter was interrupted, and now the electrodes were short-circuited, simulating the pressing of the push button but this time automatically. The filaments turn on, thus ionizing the fluorescent tube, paving the way for the arc to jump inside. While the starter was short-circuited, the arc was interrupted inside the bubble. With this, their electrodes cooled and separated from each other, simulating the releasing of the push button. The line voltage of 127 volts will now be applied to the ionized fluorescent tube, and a discharge would start. Since each lamp used to have its own starter, all you need is to apply voltage to any number of lamps together for all of them to turn on. In case a lamp did not turn on immediately, the starter would ionize again and the process would repeat itself until the lamp got started. This clever invention allowed us to enjoy white light in the middle of the night for many years, even before the invention of LED bulbs. I hope this video has been useful. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.